crowds gathering for the Euro 2020 soccer tournament are driving the current rise in coronavirus infections in Europe, the World Health Organization said on Thursday. The number of new cases rose by 10% last week. The WHO says that was driven by the mixing of crowds in Euro 2020 host cities, travel and the easing of social restrictions. Catherine Smallwood is the WHO's senior emergency officer. What we need to look at is around the stadia, how are people getting there? Are they traveling in large, crowded convoys of buses? Are they taking individual measures when they're doing that? What's happening after the games when people leave the stadiums? Are they going into crowded bars and pubs to watch the matches? And we've said that should these things, this mixing happen, there will be cases. Because if this mixing is happening among people who are not uh, fully vaccinated and there is the presence of the virus, there will be cases. The WHO said that Europe had seen a 10-week decline in new coronavirus infections before the Games. Now, the rise in new COVID cases is happening as the more contagious Delta variant spreads rapidly across the continent. European soccer's governing body UEFA said in a statement to Reuters that mitigation measures at host venues are, quote, fully aligned with the regulations set out by the competent local public health authorities. Germany's interior minister called UEFA's decision to allow big crowds utterly irresponsible, and Italy has warned fans from England not to try to use loopholes in COVID travel restrictions to sneak into the quarterfinals in Rome on Saturday, even if they have a ticket. The rise in infections has raised concern that a third wave could spread across Europe in the autumn if people don't get vaccinated. At Alpine Credits, homeowners get a call a lion, a la hayanawa, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who teach well and rule well, who taught me this truth. Peace and salutation to the Akim, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect, pushing this truth at risk of their own lives throughout the four corners of the earth. And to the Ak with listening, listening and learning. Shalom. Shabbat the Shema from the Pillars of Benjamin camp in Toronto with another lesson. And uh, as you can see here, you know, you saw the article, came out on Reuters News, right? Crowds gathering for their Euros, right? And the WHO, the WHO is saying it's uh, driving. The, 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 the waters cases, man. You know what I mean? But, uh, those with eyes to see will see. Right? This is all distractions, man. Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses, or bread and games, from the Latin, panem e circenses, is a, is a metonymic phrase referring to superficial appeasement. Superficial appeasement, right? False, false gratitude, man. Superficial surface, surface pleasure, right? It is att attributed to juvenile a, ro juvenile, a Roman poet active in the late 1st and early 2nd century uh, 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 A.D., and is used commonly in cultural, particularly political contexts, right? Bread and circuses, man. It's all distractions. Superficial appeasement. Let's look at that word. Superficial appeasement. Right, superficial means of appeasement. Food and food and entertainment provided 
by the state. <laughs> Bread and circus is a meta is a metaphor for a superficial means of appeasement. In the case of politics, the phrase is used to describe the creation of public approval, not through exemplary or excellent public service or public policy, but through diversion, distraction, or the mere satisfaction of the immediate shallow requirements of a populace. Shallow requirements of a populace. So basically, the populace being dummies. Shallow requirement of, 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 a, of a populace. Shallow requirements. These ruling class elites are calling, calling, the, pop, calling the, her, the sheep dummies. Calling the population dummies. As an offered palliative. Juvenile decreed it as a simplistic motivation of common people. The phrase also implies the erosion of ignorance of, ci of civic duty amongst the concerns of the common man. In modern usage, the phrase is taken to describe a populace that no longer values civic virtues and the public life. To many across the political spectrum, left and right, it connotes a supposed triviality and frivolity. Salak. To many across the political spectrum, left and right, it connotes a supposed triviality and, frivol and frivolity that characterized the Roman Republic prior to its decline into the autocratic monarchy, characteristic of the later Roman Empire's transformation after 44 BC. Right. Let's get some scripture. Romans. Right. And this is all distractions, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, Two thirds of our people are in for a rude awakening, right? Romans 13, verse 11, and it reads, And that knowing the time, right? Knowing what time? That now it is high time to wake out of sleep, right? Now is the time to come out of this sleep, this slumber, right? This confusion. Why? For now is our salvation nearer than we believe, right? Two thirds of our people are asleep. They're in this confusion. They're, they're, they're rocked to sleep, right? They're in the spirit of mirth, right? A few things open back up. They're in the spirit of mirth, that vibration of mirth, that, that party and bullshit spirit, that, that, that bread and circus spirit, right? Right? That's the sleep. That's the darkness, right? No knowledge, no knowledge, and no, no knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding, right? Verse 12, the night is far spent, right? The day is at hand, right? What day? The day of the return of our Lord, Yahweh. Hashem Yahushai, right? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, right? The works of darkness, right? Immersed in being asleep, spiritually asleep, being a two-third. Cast that off. Awake and return to the true power, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, right? It's the one-third going to get it. The one-third are going to wake up. The one-third are going to be delivered out of the destruction. The one third are going to be beamed up in the chariots. Two thirds of our people are, are, are going to eat a missile, perish by famine, perish by sword, perish by plague. Right? And let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Right? Put off. You can't be, you can't be immersed. In this carnal, in the in the carnalities, man, you can't be immersed in this bread and circus, man. You know what I mean? Yahawashai is coming back. You know what I mean? Ecclesiastes seven, verse four, and it reads, "The heart of the wise, the heart of the wise. Who's the wise? The one third, the elect, Right, the one third, the elect, the elect is who Yahawashai is supping with. The elect who has is who has this wisdom, this knowledge, and this understanding. Right? The heart, heart being mind, of the wise, the elect, is in the house of mourning, right? We want out of here, man. We want the day of the Lord to come. Right? That's why we're mourning. That's why we're throwing up prayers constantly. That's why we're putting in the work. But the heart of fools, right? The minds of fools. 
two thirds of our people, along with these, we're, we're, we're talking about the two thirds here, two thirds of our people, the heart of fools, right? But it 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 it, 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 it encompasses the, the 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 heathens. The heathens are fools. These wicked, these other nations are fools, right? But we're talking about the two thirds here, man. But the heart of fools, the mind of fools, is in the house of mirth, right? This house, this house of house of mirth, man. Party and bullshit, bread and circuses. Right. Meanwhile, meanwhile, a sword is being furbished. Ezekiel twenty-one, verse nine, and it reads, "Son of man, prophesy and say, thus saith Yahweh. Say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. And what is this sword, man? This sword is this sword is Esau Edom. Right. The Mosai Yahweh Shem Shai is putting the spirit." Is going to put the spirit and put this sword in the hand of Esau Edom. Psalm chapter 17. Salak. Salak. Um. Yeah, okay, look, yeah. It was buffering. I was just about to go to my sword. It was buffering for like 10 minutes, man. Ridiculous. That's Satan, man. That's Satan. The sword, yeah. Back to what we we're saying. Who is the sword? The sword is the wicked, man. Who is the wicked? Esau, Edom. Right? The ruling class elites, the banking families, the so called white man. Right? Psalms chapter 17, verse 13. Right? And he's being furbished. He's being he's being sharpened right now. Preparing, preparing. Listen, Jake. Two thirds of Jake. Two thirds of Israel. Israel. You you so called indigenous. You so called Latino. You so called Negro. Two thirds are going to be destroyed, man. Right. Esau is being sharpened. Psalm seventeen verse thirteen and it reads: Arise, O Lord, all caps Yahweh. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Right, the wicked. Deliver my soul from the wicked, Esau, which is thy sword. Yahweh Bashem Yahushai's sword. Right? And they're being they're, they're, they're being furbished, sharpened up. Meanwhile, Jake's being distracted with bread and bread and circuses, man. Ezekiel 21 verse 9 once again. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith Yahweh, Say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. Right? Esau Edom is being sharpish, sharpened and furbished, man. Right? Revelation 12 verse, verse The devil know he has but a short time. This thing's still giving trouble. That's Esau, man. That's that's that that's Satan. Right? That's Satan. Revelation 12, go to the sword. Now oh, there we go. Revelation 12, verse 12, and it reads. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe destruction to the inhabitants of the earth. Right? Two thirds of our people are gonna get caught up in this destruction, right? along with the heathen nations, along with the wicked, right? For the devil is come down unto you, right? The devil, Esau, you banking families, you 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 so called you, you banking families, you ruling class elites, right? Has come has come down unto you, unto who? Yasharala, Israelites, two thirds of our people are gonna get go, gonna get destroyed, man. Whether it be by famine, plague, sword, or ultimately a missile, intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. Right? Come down unto you Having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time, right? He knows he knows he has a short time before Yahweh Shai cracks that cracks that sky and comes back and lays waste to America the Great, Babylon the Great, which will be destroyed by thermal intercontinental ballistic missiles, along with the chariots, with the world even cause UFOs and their concentrated heat, their laser beams. The upper elites of Esau knows this. The elites know this. The the the, the ruling class elites know this. These banking families. 
These Rothschilds, these DuPonts, these Gettys, they know this. They know they have a short time. Meanwhile, Jake out here being distracted with bread and circus. Ezekiel 21, verse 10. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbish that it may glitter. Right? It's being sharpened, man. Should we then make mirth? That's a question. Should we be in that mirth vibration? Party and bullshit, bread and circuses? Right? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbish that it may be handled, right? The most high is given the most high is given this sword. The most high is rousing up, putting the spirit on Esau to roll, man. And he hath given it to be furbished, to be sharpened, that it may be handled. Handled by who? This sword is sharpened and it is furbished to give into the hand of the slayer, right? And who is the slayer? Esau Edom. The physical counterpart to the spiritual demon Satan. The physical counterpart, counterpart here on this earth, man. The slayer. And he's getting ready to roll. Meanwhile, two-thirds of our people's distracted with the bread and circus, man. But yeah, just something I wanted to touch on. Right? Shabbat Shalom. I pray edified. I don't want to say. Stay prayed up. Pray without ceasing. Kwame Asherala. Wa Abad. Babal.